we thought about we need things that add on the portfolio which we have today. And uh, what is it that will make us successful? And there are two things, I believe, which are really important to all of you, to us. And one thing is to believe that we have one big sweet spot. Not only do we reach out to every household in our countries, but we are also the experts to deliver lightweight e-commerce. And lightweight e-commerce, so something that is below one kilogram, is 80% of all e-commerce ordered today. So 80% of all potential volumes out there are more or less in the area where we as postal operators can serve best. So let's work on that. The second idea was, okay, what does it make, what, what is it that makes it difficult? And one thing is the data thing. So I'm not going to talk so much about data today, but it's all about tracking and tracing. It's, it's looking at the pipeline and checking where does this pipeline have deficiencies. Now, we all know how to do that. We've heard a few stories also from PostNL, how you can do that kind of retroactively with big data. Um, you know, people who talk about tracking and tracing, and those of you who have been at the Post Expo, um, at the beginning of this week, which happens in Geneva, so that there's a lot of technology out there now. You know, scanners, uh, sensors, um, routing um, options which have to do with, with GPS tracking and all that. Now, a couple of years ago, I think two years ago, when we thought about it, um, we were looking for a cheap alternative to the ordinary barcode tracking. And this is what I call the Um It's a German word. It's, it means translated country tracked. And it is about using a passive RFID transponder instead of using a label that contains a barcode. This is it. It's one. Could look different, but as you can see, it's very small, it's very thin, it's paper based, and it costs about five cents. Um, if you look at the situation we are in, um, I think you would all agree with these four sta uh, three statements. E commerce is growing rapidly, so there is space for niche solutions. As always, as the market grows rapidly, there can be new players coming in, new solutions coming in, and they will find their customers, they will find their, their plateaus. Um, we as Deutsche Post International, and that holds uh, obviously for, for most of you, we would plan that we offer reliable solutions, it should be convenient, inexpensive, and there are mail products that a shipper can use, so that not everybody will jump automatically to the parcel segment, which especially on, on the cross-border basis, for smaller customers is, is quite a challenge. But they can also use those shipping services that they have in our, let's call it, ordinary mail stream. And if they jump to it, they find that it's the registered service which we offer. So that one which is quite complex in terms of data requirements, uh, which uh, requires a signature uh, at, at reception of the shipment, and which at least in, in, in some places, it's quite a costly service, unless you're a very large customer. So, um, we then check the customer requirements, and again, those things you can read here are rather generic, but they also play into the, um, the area that I want to describe to you. Um, Tracker trace has to be affordable, because most of these lightweight shipments are goods that are not very pricey. And if you talk to e-merchants, the shipment issue, the shipment problem is problem number 70 and not number 5 or number 3, it's number 70. It's about data, it's about reaching out to his customers, it's about storing his goods, it's about purchasing or manufacturing his goods, it's about setting up the payment functions and all this. So problem number 70 is what do I have to do to ship it with somebody? The idea was we want to have something simple in place 
that doesn't require too many manual work, and which is easy to understand. And this lender nachweis, so our product, um, is based on a low cost tracking and tracing by using passive RFID. So all it needs on the customer side is to put that either on the package or to insert it. And hopefully in the future, he or she can even use the RFID ship which is inserted in what he ships. So have you ever recently bought a costume or a dress or, you know, very often there is an RFID inside. Yeah? It's for storage purposes, security purposes, ID purposes, whatever. Right. Now, my future aspiration is to find out if we can use this very label for our track and trace in the pipeline. You can. I know you can, but it's still very limited. But if this is something that the e-tailing industry would buy up to, that means we are not talking about s send barcoding anymore. We are not talking about an additional step that the shipper has to do. And we are not even talking about manual scanning at the reception. Because the virtue of this is that those of us who have transponder gates in their offices of exchange or sorting centers or receiving points, they can track this automatically without touching it. So right now we said to our customers that he or she receives up to six tracking gates. They are I would say not as good at, as the, 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 the track events which you have with a scanned barcode, but they're getting much, much better. So technology, the knowledge that we gather by using this product and, and the, the knowledge that the network gets helps to identify most of these transponders within the pipeline. The way it is invoiced then is when the customer activates the label. So you can buy labels um, online and also in our, our postal outlets. And you can take it home and they can sit on the shelf. Once he uses them and he activates the label, then only the whole purchase uh, process of, of inserting them into the stream. So this is just a simple picture of the pipeline. Um, I excused the, the German words in there that happened when you copy and paste. When you find out that the images are blocked, you can't work, work them over, the e-teller drops it with us in a post box or at an office. Then it travels to our centers and there it gets the first track events. So you don't have the first mile recognition. But most detailers say, well, I don't care. Because I know exactly when I went to your post office or when I dropped that into your post box. So I don't need this. That's what we call the A scan. <coughs> then it travels through the pipeline uh, into, uh, it crosses the border, it uh, ventures into the sorting center of Magia Costa, and there it gets at least two more track events, sometimes four if it has a customs function. Now it's all European traffic, so therefore there is no customs. But um, you can also have customs function if that is the way the network is set up in this center. And then it gets delivered. Now this is probably the flaw of that product because it hasn't got a delivery scan. But if we imagine that in the future the scanner can automatically recognize this RFID transponder, then you can imagine that we can find an algorithm that says if the item is then dropped and delivered and it leaves the scanner's proximity, it's like a read. So, or if it's returned into the Office of Exchange or into the sorting center because it could not be delivered and it re receives a scan there, then it, you can automatically calculate that, oh, this item has not been delivered. So with big data, we go back to the other topic, a little bit of intelligence and some assumptions the customer gets exactly the same service he gets if he labels his product, his shipment, with a barcode. Now obviously, the big thing, this is the process, so I can skip this. Obviously, there are a lot of benefits on our side, on the operations side, because 
We don't have to touch this mail piece anymore. It just travels through the pipeline, it gets automatically sorted, and it gets delivered. That's it. So there's no scanning activity involved. So it makes it very, very cost effective. Now, the customer benefits, um, if, I don't know what happens with that. Um, the, the customer benefits are very obvious. Um, somebody who has shipped with us uh, without using any tracking technology has obviously used a very affordable product. So a normal letter, you know, a packet, without any bells and whistles. And of course he says, um, in the past that was good enough for me, but now I like to have some tracking and tracing because I have to prove to the web shop that I can do this end-to-end -end within, let's say, five days or ten days. And if I ship overseas, that gets really important. Because if you go to Amazon and you want to stay listed, and you don't fulfill the quality requirements of what they tell you, they delist you. So the, the workshop needs some sort of confidence, some sort of evidence in, in, in terms of the the shipment performance. And with our gadget, you can do that in a very simple, very inexpensive manner. So that turns into better ratings, and better ratings obviously turn you to page A instead of page B, or page 1 instead of page 2, as we heard from Rudy yesterday. And that means you stay in business. Now this is a list of all the participating operators as far as I know them. You can see um, there is North America, obviously, um, there is um, um, a lot of us in Europe, but there are a lot of us in the room here who don't apply this passive readers. And, and my mission, of course, um, is a very simple one. Um, I, I, I try to drive this product. I appreciate the fact that this is probably still a niche product, but it's one option for our customers, simple to use. Um, I'd like to ask you to check with your operations and marketing people, A, if you would like to introduce such a gadget, and B, if you are willing to install these passive antennas in the offices of exchange. They're not very costly, they're very easy to service in order to widen the network. 